In this video, I'm going to talk about the starting wave function, or the initial state of this quantum mechanical system. So we're given an initial wave function, and we want to find out the time evolution of the system. That's our goal for this video. So this video is actually part of a playlist on quantum mechanics. You can find the link to this playlist in the description below. First of all, let's have a look at the general solution to Schrodinger's equation. We actually talked about this in the past few videos, and in the previous video of this playlist, we outlined how the separable solutions that we get from solving the Schrodinger equation with the method of separation of variables can actually be stitched together. And a linear combination of separable solutions is in fact the general solution. So the general solution is of this form. We have psi of x and t is equal to the sum over the index n from n equals 1 to infinity of, we're going to need some coefficients, some complex coefficients to multiply psi, this is little psi of n, and that just depends on x. These are solutions to the time independent Schrodinger equation. And then we have our exponential factor with a minus i e n t over h bar. So this e n is the allowed energy associated with this solution to the time independent Schrodinger equation. And we're stitching these separable solutions together and we're forming a linear combination. These cn constants are actually the constants in our linear combination. So this is the general solution to the Schrodinger equation. Now, what we want to find in this video is psi of x zero. So this is at t equals zero. So that is what this zero over here means. So this is at t equals zero. This is when we start time. This is the initial state of the system. So t equals zero is when everything begins, and after t equals zero is the time evolution. So this over here is the general solution for any x and any t. What can we do to get this expression over here? Well, if we see that t equals zero, we can set t equals zero over here, because there's no t uh, inside these constants. There's no t inside these solutions, these little psi of n's. And there is only a t up here in the exponential. So if we set this t over here, if, set, if we set this equal to 0, this top bit over here is going to turn into e to the power of 0. And e to the power of 0 is just equal to 1. So this just turns into 1. And we're just left with these guys. So I'll write this out in full. We're just left with the sum from n equals 1 to infinity time of cn times psi n of x. So it's essentially a linear combination of these little psi n's. That is what we are looking at. So these guys, we know, right? We know these guys because they're solutions to the time independent Schrodinger equation. And if we know the potential, which we assumed is something that depends just on x, so if we know v of x, then we can find the solutions to the time independent Schrodinger equation, and that's going to give us these guys. And that's an infinite set of solutions. And all we have to do is find these constants, so these cn's. We need to find the constant that multiplies each of, the, of these solutions to the time independent Schrodinger equation. If we can do that, if we can match the constants so that we can get this output, we have everything we need to describe the entire time evolution of this system. So I'll, I'll show you what I actually mean. What, what does this actually mean if we graph it out? If you have some kind of wave function that looks like this, let's say this is some kind of squiggly wave function at t equals zero. We want to know what happens to this at any time. So what, what, is, it, what is it going to look like? It's going to look like some other squiggle at a later time. So this is at t equals zero when we initialize the system, and this is at t equals t prime. It's some later time after t equals zero. What we need to do is we need to take this wave function and we need to write it in terms of these guys. We need to write it as a linear combination of these guys. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to find these constants. If we know these constants, then we can just put this in here and add in the exponential factor, and that's going to give us the wave function for any time t. It doesn't matter what time it is, we're going to know exactly what it's going to do. Until 
we get to measurement. The moment you measure the wave function, you're going to collapse it to a spike, and this is no longer going to work. You're going to have to uh, do some extra work, and it's going to get a little more complicated. But as long as the system is left in its little state, it is going to evolve according to this equation over here. That is how it's going to change over time. So the key message of this video is, if you want to find the initial state of the wave function, and if you want to find the time evolution, all you need to know is this initial state, and all you have to do is write it in terms of these psi n's. If you write it in terms of these guys, and you write it in terms of this representation of constants, if you do that, if you can find C1, C2, C3, all the way up to Cn, if you can do that, and there could actually be an infinite number of these ones, if you can find all these constants, you know everything there is to know about this wave function. That is the beauty of this form of the solution. All you need is these constants, and you can find the time evolution for any time. So this video is part of a playlist on quantum mechanics, and you can actually find all the other videos in this playlist where we keep talking about these interesting topics in quantum mechanics. And you can click over here.